Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to the Wonders Radio Show for May the 13th, 2012. Uh, happy Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day here in North America. I guess, I don't even know, is it all over the world? Who knows? <laughs> probably not, uh, but it probably should be, right, folks? Anyway, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and thanks again, folks, for tuning in. Um, yeah, it's funny listening to that music. Um, I was talking to Renee the other day and he, he's like, oh yeah, you kept the old intro music in there. That's pretty cool. And, um, cause I'm a musician and you know, I've been, I've written some music for a few of the wonders vids and I was going to write some music for the show. And, uh, he's like, oh yeah, that's really cool. And f for those of you that don't know, uh, Renee actually made that music, uh, with his iTunes, with his garage band. So he pieced it all together and he's not a musician, so it came out pretty cool. So, uh, I thought we'd keep, uh, keep the tradition alive there and keep that music in there. <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, another week we have another show, another session, and I hope everyone enjoyed the last one. We did get a, I, I did get a couple of, uh, emails about some possible questions. Um, some people that have also been studying with the wonders for a little while mentioned some things. And um, so I, I found this little comment that they made from one of the Universal Mysteries sessions that always kind of stuck with me. And it really it summed up a pretty, I don't know what to even call it, a, an awareness or a reality of, of who we are and how we got here and where we're going. And so I thought I would ask him a few questions about that just to start it off and see where it led. So uh, that's what we did this week. And um, I had some listeners that already said that I had some listeners phone in um, right in with those questions. And, um, you know, a couple comments on YouTube, people sharing um, the radio show on Facebook and all that. And that's that's really great to see because that's kind of the plan. Just get it out there. And um, lots of great workshops coming up. Summer's coming up. There's an amazing retreat coming up with the Wonders um, in a little over a month, I guess. It's coming up fast. And, uh, oh, somebody did ask me about why is it that when the Wonders speak, there's always uh, like, the, mm, 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 you know, they're kind of like um, adjusting the Renee's voice or, or whatever when in between words and such. Um, uh, like if you think of it like because they did talk about this if you think about it um, almost like a vibration or a frequency the when Renee sets himself aside and allows the wonders to come through their their frequency or their vibration has to match this sort of third dimensional physical world you know if you want to see it like that so there's you know there's some shifts when he has to move his body or when they have to say certain words uh, I think the adjustment is just more to adjust the frequency that, so they can clearly speak through his body you know uh, and I could be wrong but I, I they did mention that once and I'm pretty sure um, uh, that's what's going on there and in the future I'll have of course um, Renee and Maggie on the show and we'll talk about all kinds of things and I'm sure they'll answer lots of uh, curiosities that people might have about their lives and 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 how they feel about things and wonders and everything right so that'll be cool and uh what else yeah so we did uh again we did one session we cut it into two so this week it's the first half of the session so there'll be no comment from renee and then the next show we'll do the rest of the session which i went in a different direction too so um and then i think after that uh the next few shows we'll do some current events there's all kinds of things going on in the world uh that would be um great to explore with the wonders and um you know really dig into you know all kinds of war religion politics economy you know uh, the environment that's just it's never ending right so so we'll definitely get into some of that and um you know in the meantime just enjoy the session and you know share the love if you want to share the videos share the awareness of the wonders with people you know who might find this useful interesting um yeah, there's just so much. So anyway, folks, enjoy. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks, Renee and Maggie. And we'll see you all next time in a couple weeks. Okay, everybody, take care. Bye. Uh, oh, there's no video this week. So we'll have video next week. So um, yeah, that's what happened. So there's no video, just the audio file. Enjoy. And we'll see you next time, guys. Take care. Yes, we have this one. Thank you. May we begin? Please. Okay, Jeff. Greetings, Wonder. Greetings, Jeff. Um, today, I'd like to explore some concepts that you spoke of during the Universal Mysteries series that you did a while back. Okay. Um, I have a quote from you, so I'll read it off here. It says, in answer to a question, the question was, how do we fit into the universe and existence? And the answer was, you chose to incarnate into this experience in order to experience the possibilities and probabilities of free will and free choice that would lead you to understand the movement that must take place in order to move beyond the perspective of separation that holds you separate from fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensional reality, which are the creators of your existence. 
and therefore rediscover the journey, the direction, the movement to take place to return to a oneness with the essence of God, God of the all that is, which is an essence of allowance. Um, we sound pretty good, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, so I would just like to, I guess, start exploring that. There's just so much in there. Um, as far as where we're at now, our, our perception of where we come from and who we are and how we got here. And um, So please ask. Yeah. So my first question, I guess, relates to the fact that we chose to incarnate. So it seems that the, the overall worldwide perspective is that somehow we were put here or that we evolved somehow, and no one seems to really understand the perspective that we actually chose to come here. Right. And, and I was wondering if you could explain that process of choosing to come here and from which perspective did we choose? Well, first, the process is simple. I choose. Yeah. <laughs> now, understand it from this perspective, and we know where you're going with this. Mm -hmm. mm, in the scientific community, the science perceives that humanity itself mm, went through an evolutionary process. Mm -hmm. And this is why you now have Homo sapiens. And we agree with that. There is a certain degree of evolutionary process that has occurred on a physical level to transform what you, you, we, you would call reality, or the physical form, and what we would call illusion. Mm -hmm. It's called an evolutionary process, and it's, it's an evolutionary process whether you see it from the physical perspective or you see it from our perspective. It's still an evolutionary process. It's an, the difference is you see it as an evolution of physical, we see it as an evolution of consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's as so simple as that. Now, okay. having said that, hmm, that does not account for how individuals, consciousness, manifests itself. Mm -hmm. mm, yes, mm, a person is born, okay? You have a, f a sperm and an egg coming together, and they form a fetus, which forms eventually into an infant uh, that is born, uh, that comes through the birthing canal and is born. So that explains the physical aspects. But how do you explain the ability to reason, the ability to think, the ability to perceive, the ability to know, the ability to judge, uh, the ability to mm, choose. And the only way to explain that mm, is really from a, there's nothing much that you can do from a scientific perspective. Mm -hmm. and though they do, they are looking for the God particle right now. But the only way you can actually explain it is to realize that there is a consciousness that is formed, created. Religion is arguing as to when this consciousness is formed. They suggest that it's formed when the sperm and the egg come together. We would disagree with that. Mm. Scientists would uh, st uh, extrapolate or uh, assume that the consciousness is formed mm, once the individual is born. And to a degree, we'd agree with that. But not quite. We would suggest that the consciousness itself infuses itself into the fetus, oftentimes weeks before the birth, and then sometimes even months before the birth. Mm. Not always, sometimes. So, consciousness, what is it? It's the, this ability, this identity that defines the self. It's that which allows mm, choice. And when you see it from the perspective of what we're just suggesting, we're suggesting here that consciousness has evolved to the point where choice mm, is being made more and more to incarnate into an experience, a physical experience, in order to explore this physical experience and gain a new expansion of consciousness to reawaken it to itself the awareness that it is not separate from the oneness of, of essence, of God essence, but sim simply part of it. Mm -hmm. So consciousness itself then mm, is infused into the infant, infuses itself through choice, because it is the consciousness of separation that infuses itself into the separation of the physical realm. So in other words, there is a consciousness not the personality of Jeff, for example, but the mm -hmm. consciousness that 
includes Jeff, has chosen to incarnate into that particular body, and the parents proudly have a child, uh, realize that they're, he's a male, and so call him Jeff. You think? Mm -hmm. Jeff, then, mm, as the consciousness creates a mind, mm, Jeff, the mind, now starts to realize who Jeff, the personality, is and creates personality from that. Do you think? Mm -hmm. So the result is, as Jeff grows up, Jeff's personality begins to expand and grow mm -hmm. and based on experiences, based on mm, basically experiences, Jeff's personality chooses, fears, and grows. And eventually, Jeff's personality eventually dies as Jeff dies. Do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the consciousness, that which holds together Jeff's personality and marries it with that which infused itself into the body of Jeff, that consciousness mm, stays and remains always. Mm. Mm. Now, that consciousness still sees itself as separate. Otherwise, it wouldn't have incarnated into Jeff the body. That's why it chose a body called Jeff, because it sees itself as separate and wanted to experience separation from a different perspective. But of course, the whole point of it is to gain an understanding and an awareness of itself as a separation to move beyond it. Mm -hmm. Now, as Jeff, the personality and the ego starts to grow and expand and Jeff's the personality starts to look at mm, understanding and awareness and it all of a sudden discovers the wonders and starts to explore and becomes aware that it's more than simply, simply a singular, singular separation, all of a sudden that awareness starts to permeate back to the consciousness that, in, that took over Jeff, the body, do you think? Mm -hmm. The consciousness says, hmm, that's interesting. So the more Jeff the personality explores in this direction, the more uh, Jeff the consciousness, the consciousness that includes Jeff, begins to become aware of all of this. Do you think? Mm. And it begins to question itself and its own view of separation with the view, of course, to gain an awareness and understanding of itself as part of a greater wholeness, a greater oneness. Mm -hmm. So... The scientists have yet to discover the center of consciousness. Now, in the process right now, they're looking to create or to discover the, what they call the God particle. But that's not the consciousness particle. That's not where consciousness resides. You think? Mm -hmm. And they're having difficulty with that because, of course, scientists want to identify in a physical realm that which is unidentified unidentifiable, rephrase, in a physical way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the difficulty that they're having right now. So eventually, though, they will start looking for the consciousness particle, which, of course, will be quite interesting, rather humorous from our perspective. But Why? that's because how can you find that which doesn't exist? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> At least it doesn't exist in the physical realm. Mm -hmm. Consciousness, so. even though you yourself are a physical body and you are an, a personality called Jeff, your consciousness, that which is, uh, that which holds your personality and your body together, that, even though it expresses itself in the physical realm, doesn't exist in the physical realm. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Mm -hmm. So that's the difficulty that uh, your scientists will have. So this is a, the, the interesting aspect of it, is when you look at it from that perspective, you start to realize that, okay, people incarnate, they make, their consciousness makes a choice to go and find out from what it is to be physical, what it is to be separate. And of course, the reason it does that is because when you exist in, in a non-physical way, you have no way of defining the real limits of separation of yourself. When you exist physically, in a physical way, then the limits of separation are much more easily defined and easily identified. Mm -hmm. So which is why the consciousness chooses to incarnate into this experience, because after all, this is an opportunity. If it didn't choose the bodies of humans, it would have chosen a different body. 
Mm-hmm. By the way, don't kid yourself. Mm, Homo sapiens has a higher ability to reason in part because of a mind that is more developed. Okay? Mm-hmm. The brain is more developed. And the brain being more developed can accommodate a greater mind. Having said that, some would argue that the mind is seated in the brain. Not true, but it's a good arg- argument to be made anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, in that sense, it is it could be argued that the consciousness that in looks to explore separation by exploring the physical realm would only do so in an advanced, highly intelligent brain, mm, which is what Homo sapiens is. Mm-hmm. But actually, consciousness that is separate also explores other forms of physical realm. So, for example, sometimes you will find that humans relate to animals, certain animals, in a very, very, hmm, almost, call it weird way, where they know the animal to be themselves. Do you think? Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's part of the consciousness. Consciousness that infuses itself into the Homo sapiens, into the Jeff the body, doesn't limit itself to just Jeff the body. Do you think? Mm-hmm. And so, and we're not saying this that all consciousness does that. We're saying some consciousness choose to explore Jeff the body and maybe mm, j- um, mm, Rover the dog. Do you think? Mm-hmm. And, mm, Simultaneously. Maybe, exactly. And not necessarily in the same space either. Mm-hmm. Rover the dog could be on one side of the world, Jeff the body could be on the other side of the world. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Consciousness is not limited by space. Mm-hmm. So, it's just another way of exploring it. But again, it's all based on choice. Consciousness makes a choice. It says, hmm, mm-hmm. I want to explore, and this is how it does it. Mm-hmm. Do you see? So, does that help to explore things? Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, the idea of fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensional reality being the creators of this third dimensional reality, I mean, that's not something... Not the creators, so much as the, well, they are, to a certain degree. Fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension of reality really wanted to explore mm, evolution. They wanted mm-hmm. to realize how they came about. And in order to do that, mm, they seeded, and uh, created and seeded mm, the third dimensional reality as a way of exploring more finite mm, limitations of space and time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the space and time limitations of fourth, fifth, and sixth are very different than what they are in third. In third, they are very mm, linear, very finite. Mm-hmm. You think? Which is why they exp- they exp- extended themselves into this area. Third dimensional reality and second and first would not exist were it not for fourth, fifth, and sixth and their desire to explore themselves differently. Mm-hmm. But now we would also be our consciousness would also be in those dimensions at the same time as well, right? Oh, yes, but not entirely as your ego would like to see it. Mm. Your ego would like to think that your consciousness is sitting up there or somewhere, and it's exploring fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension, and seventh, and tenth, and twelfth, and so on. Mm -hmm. Not that... hmm. It's like Jeff the personality... Mm, not belonging to simply Jeff the body. Do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm, Your consciousness, yes, explores third-dimensional reality. And yes, it is aware of its connection to fourth. But beyond that, it is oftentimes not aware. Mm -hmm. Because it it just leads me to think that if it hadn't been for sources like yourselves explaining this, how would you, would everybody have this inherent knowing somewhere inside them? Eventually, the knowing is inside. Eventually, it would be uncovered in a conscious way. Mm -hmm. And eventually, it would percolate to the surface. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But no, it's, again, not fully aware. Mm -hmm. Wonder, should we pause one moment? Please. Thank you. 